So one of the first points that I make is, is to consider uh, a next generation sequencing, both DNA and RNA sequencing, so that you can pick up on these fusions. Because if you can't identify them, you can't deliver uh, targeted therapies for these patients. So that's, that's point one. Uh, I think what we've learned uh, over the past six or seven years is that we do have now drugs that, that target ROS1 rearrangements. The first was, of course, crizotinib, uh, and the data published by Alice Shaw uh, several years back showed a response rate north of 70% with the median progression-free survival of around 19 months. Uh, and because of that, crizotinib uh, was uh, approved uh, as a, a targeted therapy specifically for ROS1 rearrangements. More recently, we've had the approval of entrectinib. Uh, entrectinib, the data comes from a, the pooled star track analysis, which was phase one, three phase one or phase two trials, looking specifically at 53 patients with ROS1 rearrangements treated with entrectinib. All patients were, were um, uh, ROS1 inhibitor naive. And impressively, there was a response rate again, north of 70%. There was a median progression-free survival identical to that of crizotinib around 19.3 months. I think the difference with crizotinib was, excuse me, the difference with entrectinib is that it did show uh, uh, intracranial responses. This drug is more potent than crizotinib and it was designed specifically to cross the blood-brain barrier. Uh, so we did see an, an impressive intracranial response with entrectinib. Uh, we did not have that reported out with crizotinib. So, you know, currently um, we have two drugs approved for ROS1 rearrangements. 